embolism syndrome, isn't it? What is this fat embolism? It is a very dangerous syndrome where there is a fracture in the shaft of femur because of which the bone marrow fat globules will extravasate out and there will also be adjacent vascular structures which would be damaged. Small blood vessels would be damaged, isn't it? These fat globules will enter these vessels and reach the systemic circulation. From there, it will spread to multiple areas in the body. Multiple organ damage occurs and finally the patient can even die. This is your fat embolism syndrome. How do you identify fat embolism syndrome? Okay, so always there would be a trigger for fat embolism syndrome and the most common trigger is fracture shaft of femur that is the case here other cause can be fracture shaft of tibia burns could be a cause but most commonly it would be fracture shaft of femur then there would always be a time delay it never happens that Today, the fracture occurs immediately after a few hours, fat embolism syndrome develops. Never, it never happens like that. It takes some time. Generally, the time delay is between 24 to 72 hours. On an average, it is 48 hours or two days. That is what is given here. Then, these patients will have a triad of symptoms, which is your respiratory symptoms in the form of difficulty in breathing, dyspnea. Then, there could be tachypnea. Then there would be fall in partial pressure of oxygen, SpO2 would fall. Then there would be CNS symptoms in the form of altered mental status. There could be seizures, aggressive behavior, altered sensorium, all these things would be there. Then there would be rashes. But the problem in rashes is that it is not very evident in Indians. Why? Because of her darker skin complexion, these rashes may not be very evident. So, in this patient, there is difficulty in breathing, which is your respiratory symptom, and altered mental status, which is your CNS symptom. So, everything put together, the classical features of fat embolism is right there. Okay. Next question. Again, a straightforward question. A 30-year-old male presents with history of fall. He has sustained a fracture shown in the x-ray below which nerve can be affected in this injury. So look at the x-ray and tell me what fracture is this. If you look here, you will see that there is fracture in the shaft of humerus, isn't it? There is fracture in the shaft of humerus. And when you have a fracture like that, there is always a risk of injuring a particular nerve. What nerve is that? A nerve that binds around the shaft of humerus in the spiral groove and goes like this, isn't it? Which nerve is that? That is your radial nerve, radial nerve. Fracture shaft of humerus is associated with radial nerve injuries. That is our answer. Now, interestingly, all these nerves are actually closely related to your humerus. So, if you look at the axillary nerve, axillary nerve actually binds around the neck of humerus. So, axillary nerve can get injured whenever there is a fracture neck of humerus. Radial nerve binds around the shaft here. So, radial nerve will get injured in fracture shaft of humerus. Then coming down in the supracondylar area when you have a fracture there is a risk of injury to the median nerve. So, median nerve can be injured in supra condylar supracondylar fracture of humerus and finally you have the ulnar nerve which passes behind the medial condyle isn't it you know the medial condyle even if you palpate your elbow you can feel the ulnar nerve behind your medial condyle that is why you get the funny bone when you get injured there isn't it so Alna now passes behind the medial condyle of humerus. So, any fracture in the medial condyle of humerus can result in alna nerve injury. So, this is something very, very important. Any of these x-rays could be asked for your exam and they will ask you which is the appropriate nerve injury. Okay, you should always remember this. Question number three. 
a patient was involved in a road traffic accident and presented with the following fracture. What type of fracture is this? So what x-ray is this? This is an x-ray of proximal. Proximal means upper, proximal femur. Okay. In the proximal femur, there are a few important structures you see here. What is this? That is your femoral head. This is your femoral head. Okay, this is your femoral head. Now, what structure is this? The broad structure on the lateral aspect. This is your greater trochanter. Greater trochanter. And this structure that you see on the medial side is your lesser trochanter. This is your lesser trochanter. Okay. Now, this area, the area between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter, this area between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter is called the intertrochantric area. So, this patient has a fracture starting from the greater trochanter here, starts here and goes towards the lesser trochanter. So, a fracture starting at the greater trochanter going towards the lesser trochanter or a fracture occupying the intertrochantric region is your intertrochanteric fracture, intertrochanteric fracture. That is the answer here. So, I will just quickly show you a, the image of a femur and tell you which, are, which all fractures can you see here. So, if you get a fracture here, what area is that? That is your neck of femur, isn't it? So, if you have a fracture there, you call it fracture neck of femur. So, this is your greater trochanter. This is your lesser trochanter. If you get a fracture in this intertrochanteric region, it would be a intertrochanteric fracture. Intertrochanteric fracture. Then, see, this is your lesser trochanter. This is your lesser trochanter. Now, if you measure 5 centimeters below it, 5 centimeters below the lesser trochanter. So, the area between the lesser trochanter and 5 centimeters below it is called the subtrochanteric region. Subtrochanteric region. Okay. So, if you get a fracture in the subtrochanteric region, you call it the subtrochanteric fracture. So, most proximal or upper, you get the fracture neck of femur. Just below it, you get the intertrochanteric fracture coming down 5 cm below the lesser trochanter. That is, the area between the lesser trochanter and 5 cm below it is the subtrochanteric region. Any fracture there is subtrochanteric fracture. Now, if you, if you have any fracture below the subtrochanteric level, you call it fracture shaft of femur. Now, you can see the two condyles. This is the lateral condyle and this is the medial condyle. The area just above the condyle is the supracondylar region. So, any fracture there is the fracture, supracondylar fracture. You can call it the supracondylar, supracondylar fracture of femur okay so these are the various fractures that you can get in the shaft in the hole of femur neck of femur below it intertrochanteric then you have the subtrochanteric fracture fracture shaft of femur and supracondylar fracture of femur next question a 70 year old female presented with history of fall she has sustained injury as shown in the x-ray below. What is the best treatment for this patient? So, very, very commonly asked question. So, tell me, I have already taught you how to identify the various fractures in the femur. So, what fracture is this? What part is fractured? You can see this is the head of femur which is completely separated from the neck. So, this is what we call as the fracture neck of neck of femur, a fracture neck of femur. Fracture neck of femur is treated according to a very important protocol or a flow chart. So, this is something you have to learn for your exam. So, the treatment of fracture neck of femur depends on two things. One is the age of the patient and other is presence or absence of osteoarthritis of the hip. Imagine the patient is more than 65 years and there is no osteoarthritis. You do something called as hemiarthroplasty. 
if the patient is more than 65 there is a fracture and there is osteoarthritis you have to do a total hip replacement if the patient's age is less than 65 and there is no osteoarthritis you fix the fracture usually we do a screw fixation now what if the patient's age is less than 65 but has osteoarthritis again you have to do a total hip replacement so if the patient has osteoarthritis in the hip don't have to look at the age you have to do a total hip replacement if there is no osteoarthritis and the patient's age is more than 65 you do a hemiarthroplasty if the age is less than 65 you do a screw fixation now let's use this flow chart here what is the age of the patient age of the patient is 70 years that is above 65 years now there is no mention regarding osteoarthritis if they do not mention osteoarthritis you can forget about it you can take it as there is no osteoarthritis okay unless they say specifically there is osteoarthritis you can assume that there is no osteoarthritis so above 65 without osteoarthritis treatment is hemiarthroplasty hemiarthroplasty that is the answer next question which ligament injury is tested in the following test so you have an image given here this exam there were a lot of image based questions so see what is happening here the knee of the patient is flexed to 90 degrees the patient is lying down the knee is flexed to 90 degrees see the the, the examiner is sitting on the foot of the patient examiner is sitting on the foot of patient why does he do that he wants to stabilize the foot and lower limb of the patient then the examiner is keeping the thumb on the tibia and he is pulling the tibia forwards why to see if there is any subluxation of the tibia and this test is what we call as the anterior anterior prior test anterior prior test okay anterior prior test is the most important test for injury to which ligament anterior cruciate ligament so that is the answer so how do you test for pcl pcl is tested using the posterior drawer test what about medial collateral ligament it is tested using a test called as the valgus stress test then lateral collateral ligament is tested using the varus stress test now important thing to remember is that anterior crucial ligament can be tested using the anterior drawer test as well as a test called Lachman test and remember Lachman test is the best test Lachman test is the best test it exactly looks like this except that the knee would be bent to 30 degrees instead of 90 degrees okay Lachman test is best because it is less painful to the patient it is also more specific so remember ACL can be tested using the anterior droid test which is shown here or the Lachman test where the knee is just flexed to 30 degrees the rest is almost the same it is the best test posterior cruciate test a ligament is tested using the posterior droid test medial collateral ligament valgus stress test lateral collateral ligament varus stress test now coming to the last question this was the most complicated question in orthopedics so a five week old male infant is brought to the emergency department by his parents with complaints of lethargy and poor feeding on clinical examination the child has bruises over the chest and the abdomen swelling around the knee joints x-ray reveals multiple fractures of different stages of healing including long bone fractures around the knee posterior rib fractures and subdural hematomas on neuroimaging based on the above findings and images provided what is the most likely diagnosis so this is a very unfortunate situation where a little baby five week old baby is brought to you with multiple fractures and injuries so what are the things there are multiple injuries in the chest and the abdomen bruises are there then multiple fractures are there even a head injury is there so what could be the cause we'll look at each option from d to a we'll start with birth trauma 
can birth trauma cause fractures yes if the child if there is shoulder dystocia during childbirth when the obstetrician pulls the child out sometimes the clavicle can break so birth trauma can produce a fracture of the clavicle sometimes i have seen cases where both the clavicles are fractured these are what we see in birth trauma other multiple fractures in multiple stages of healing can you get fractures in different stages of healing in birth trauma it is impossible isn't it the baby was has just been born and there is only one injury so in birth trauma so there cannot be a case where fractures would be in different stages of healing what does this fractures in different stage of healing indicate this means that child had multiple traumas isn't it probably one fracture occurred last week another fracture occurred one month back then it maybe another injury occurred two uh, two weeks back you never know so multiple fractures in multiple uh, stages of healing is c can it be accidental fall this is a five week old child the child cannot walk child cannot run the child cannot even crawl how can the child accidentally fall unless the parents are careless or they are purposefully doing it isn't it so birth trauma cannot be the option accidental fall cannot be the case now the two options both battered baby syndrome and osteogenesis imperfecta what is this osteogenesis imperfecta it is brittle bone disease brittle bone disease it is it occurs because of collagen 1a gene mutation because of this gene mutation the entire bones of the child are very weak so even a slight trauma the mother hugging the child when the child is being bathed trivial injuries can cause fractures in these children multiple fractures can occur and these fractures can be in different stages of healing okay but can there be subdural hematoma no head injury and all will not be seen in osteogenesis imperfecta so that is not the correct option so the correct answer here is battered baby syndrome where uh, really bad people so they don't take care of the child in fact they physically abuse this little child causing multiple fractures chest injury rib fractures and even subdural hematoma so in fact posterior rib fractures and all are very indicative of battered baby syndrome this usually occurs when the child is taken like this and the chest is compressed by the caretaker and shaken the baby is shaken that is when you get posterior rib fractures and subdural hematomas and all okay all other diseases these kind of injuries are not seen so the correct answer here is battered baby syndrome so so that's it these were the six questions i hope that all of you have got all these answers correct so even if you have not done the exam very well don't worry be calm there is enough time for the and uh, the results to come keep calm i am very sure that you will pass with flying colors even if you have made few mistakes doesn't matter all it takes is 150 marks isn't it so we all hope and pray that you all do very well and all the best